to NURFM.com, a broadcast service of the University of Newcastle. As we all board the crazy train of politics for another year, it's a warm welcome to University of Newcastle Associate Professor in Politics, Dr Jim Jones. Hi, Jim. Hi, Meryl. Just when we thought that, uh, you know, the world couldn't get any sillier, we're off with leaks starting for the first day back for federal parliament with the talking notes for the Liberal Party being pretty much immediately disseminated to the media. Yes, it's, it's, it's not overly surprising, uh, given the way in which politics has been going over the past few years, that some of the confidentiality that one normally expected a few years back has long since disappeared. And it's... Given um, Tony Abbott's announcement that he's going to stay in Parliament, he's going to stand again, um, it's not surprising then that one or other of his supporters perhaps have um, made these public. The consequences are not all that damaging in terms of what they're actually saying. There's a bit of strategy revealed, but it's not crucial, and the Labor Party um, and the Greens will be expecting those sorts of questions and those sorts of targets um, being set up. Perhaps, though, what it signals more negatively for Malcolm Turnbull is that he has, as he is well aware, you know, fractious people within his um, coalition, and that coalition is not hang- going to hang together as easily or as smoothly as it should. At present, it's not going to do a lot of damage because he's got a big enough lead as um, preferred prime minister. The government's popularity in the polls is strong enough to withstand a little bit of white anting from within. However, if it doesn't sort of get nipped in the bud um, fairly soon, he's likely to find that the white anting will become far more um, damaging. And as they head into the election, which this is an election year, so there will be a large amount of attention within the party on the prospects at the next election. And at some point, he's probably going to have to have a one of those, um, shall we say, backroom talks to his um, colleagues to some of them need to pull their heads in. Um, and Is this almost Rudd Gillard-esque in its uh, just general picture where you've now got uh, Tony Abbott stepping back in saying, look, I still feel as though I've got something c- to contribute. I'm interested in your analysis of Tony Abbott's remaining. Is it what he's always done, what he knows? Like anyone in a job, I know it, I love it, I want to keep doing it. Or is there more to it that he really wants a, a John Howard-esque shot at another time as Prime Minister? Well, I think there's some of what you say about, well, you know, I love the job and this is all I can do. And in some respects, that's really all he can do. Um, His talents are not particularly prominent in other areas. Um, His success as Prime Minister, unfortunately, has made it difficult for people to offer him, who is lack of success as Prime Minister, have made it difficult for people to offer him uh, other alternatives. And so in many respects, it's true that this is what he does best. Politics is what he does. Um, is this a sort of rerun of you know, the Rudd-Gillard process? Uh, I don't really think so, but for, for two reasons. The first is that the supporters that are close to him that are going to be doing the white anting and um, crunching numbers and mobilising are not very good at what they do. <laughs> okay. And um, when I look at what happened in the Labor Party, there are a number of people who were in the back, behind the scenes, um, who had some influence and who did things that... Um, were effective because they were good at what they did and they'd been doing it for years. Unfortunately, some of the people that, um, particularly the parliamentary politicians around Tony Abbott, are not particularly adept at... At at, at, backstabbing. um, Oh, they're good at backstabbing, but they're not good at the sort of um, manoeuvring and political chicanery that you need to be able to do without being obvious about it, and yet the outcome is obvious. So... Mm. There's, I don't think he's got the skill set behind him that he needs. So, and I think Malcolm Turnbull senses that and understands it. The problem for Malcolm Turnbull is how he, how he might isolate those people in ways that render what they do ineffectual. And at the moment, um, I think he's playing it quite cool and just leaving it sit. Um, he'll be looking to reorganising his cabinet and that might give us a clue as to how he's... Um, 
going to neutralise or deal with these people. That and could the, be that could be the master stroke politically for Malcolm Turnbull, just what he comes up with with yes, that shuffle. Exactly. I don't think Tony Abbott has the same, um, shall we say, rud like characteristics. Um, there's a parallel, but it's it's nowhere near identical. And I think when when push comes to shove. Um, Tony Abbott doesn't have the the sort of adroitness that Kevin Rudd displayed, even though it was pretty obvious what was going on and um, Julia Gillard knew that um, come the sort of party room um, so-called debate, um, the gig was up. I Mm. think with Malcolm Turnbull, given where the party's positioned at in government, given where the Labor Party's positioned, which is nowhere at the moment, and the leader of the Labor Party is even further behind. Well, I want to come to that. Bill yeah. Shorten, whilst Malcolm Turnbull's got his problems keeping his loyalty and his troops in line as Prime Minister and maintaining that, Bill Shorten really hasn't been able to make... He hasn't made any mistakes, but he's absolutely made no traction with voters. And he is, as Cactus portrays him, still very grey, really, isn't he? Yeah, it, it's it's sort of difficult to know what more he can do because he's not doing anything less than any other opposition leader has done over the years in terms of trying to get their message across and in terms of sort of presenting the Labor Party as an alternative government. It just does not seem to be gathering any, um, uh, as you say, any traction. Um, That may be because he is an unassuming person in the way he operates, or it might simply be because he's not had a big issue that he's been able to work with. Now, maybe the tax issue maybe education, Um, can the Labor Party get out a different sort of message than the one that the government's running and make some political mileage out of it? I mean, that's really what um, they've got to come up with, but whether they can do that in the current context with a relatively popular government, one that's not making too many mistakes and one with a really popular leader. Mm. It's certainly an interesting landscape ahead of us politically with this election year coming up. It's going to be great to have you in studio each week to sift through the uh, the chaff and wheat in our political scene. Dr Jim Jones, thanks so much. We'll catch yep. you next Monday. My pleasure, Meryl. Book a time every Monday for that great analysis. Dr Jim Jones, Talking Politics on 2NURFM.